Welcome to Rudolph Valentino Connections. This video is a version of my blog post entitled Rudolph Valentino Joins Paramount's Gallery of Stars, 1922. Now this first part really summarizes all the activity Rudolph Valentino had during 1922. And the reality is all his filmmaking really happened within the first six months. So you can read through this and get the whole chronology of what he was doing then. By June of 1922, Valentino was near the top of the hierarchy of Paramount stars. Of course, this had started back in March of 1921 when The Four Horsemen was released. He was noticed for his acting and his tango dancing, of course. And then it was November of 1921 when The Sheik was released, and that's when the real outburst of adoration, especially by female fans, occurred, and that carried over into 1922. Miranda Lady Letty was filmed and released then in February of 1922, and ultimately Beyond the Rocks with Gloria Swanson was released in May. This ad spread comes from the Saturday Evening Post and is dated June 17, 1922. It's from my collection, and the Saturday Evening Post was a really popular magazine by that time in 1922. It had an average circulation of over 2 million, and ads like this one helped give it advertising revenue of over $28 million a year. The magazine was a prime advertising vehicle for the movie industry, along with newspapers and fan magazines, such as Photoplay. On the left-hand side of the spread are the directors, and the top one is Cecil B. DeMille. On the right-hand page, we have most of the actors, and at the very top is Gloria Swanson, with Thomas Megan very close behind and Valentino just behind him. So I've provided a list of the um, actors and actresses and directors according to their position on the page as best I could. And also some little notes about which actors and directors came in and out of Valentino's life um, at some point during his career up until then and in the future. And here is a little closer look at the hierarchy um, with Valentino just below Thomas Megan, and of course both of them below Gloria Swanson. At this time of year, the studios would present a preview of upcoming releases for the next season, which in 1922 ran from August to January of 1923. So about a month after the ad above, the newspapers published a list of this time 41 films that were going to be released during this period. To top it all off, Paramount actually made a promotional film that highlighted its company of directors and actors. This ad appeared right alongside the listing that you've seen in the prior slide. Now the list of actors in this ad was divided into two sections. The stars, where Valentino was listed, and these players. And the players were well-known names, actually, some of them. Leonaldi, Walter Long, but another player named Theodore Kosloff was on this list, and he was involved with Natasha Rombova before she and Valentino met. Now, luckily for us, we can actually see this humorous 10-minute film on YouTube, thanks to the historic Hollywood channel. The film starts with a sequence featuring Dorothy Dalton in snippets of her various roles, beginning with Miranda the Lady Letty. It shows how charming she was and why she was such a popular player, in spite of the critical reviews she got for her appearance in Morana the Lady Letty. The sequence featuring Valentino on the set of Blood and Sand as he trains to fight a bull starts at approximately minute 440, and it also includes the other stars in the film. Unfortunately, as Rudolf Valentino was finally coming into his own as a true star versus being a player, the path to a reversal of the early momentum of the first part of 1922 was already in place. In January of 1923, Paramount released its schedule of films for the period between February 1st and August 1st, 1923, known as the Super 39. The name of Rudolf Valentino was nowhere to be seen. 
Of course, I've included my notes and sources. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you subscribe and thanks for watching.